same view. You I, uh, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, edit that. All good, all good. Though I'm a little worried that uh, you have no better plans than talking to me. I, I, Bharat, you need to have a better life. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I enjoy doing this as well. But like, I hope Britain opens up and allows you to go out, watch a couple of matches, you know, you know, meet friends and things like that. Is it happening soon? Yeah. Oh my God. But have you gotten your uh, vaccine yet? Uh, have the rolled out any plan for you? Oh, all's good. Um, in terms of uh, World FC, the the fixtures are out now. We're playing uh, Kerala United first. That's a big club in Kerala right now. They they're the ones that were sponsored uh, or backed by Sheffield. And uh, they're a big club. They've made a couple of, uh, rather like five, six really nice signings. So it'll be a big match. It's also the first match of the tournament. So a lot of eyeballs there as well. I've headed back home. I had some other work to do. So I'm back in Kochi, but uh, the preparations are going fine. And hopefully we'll be able to see, you know, something interesting happening. I'm, I'm hoping for a positive result, but that's all we can say right now.
Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I mean, my my role with Kolam is more to do with the uh, the PR side of it. I just go there because I'm also good friends with footballers and I like spending time there. So uh, my role, I can sit here also, and we are. I'm like more concerned about building the academy and that that aspect of the club. So we are making plans for the next year right now. We're using the summer to sort of you know chart out a list of activities which includes possible tournament within the coast itself. So. Sort of looking at like a coastal unity, so we get like a lot of clubs around the coast of Trivandrum to come and play a tournament with us and things like that. So we're doing the planning. We've left the the preparations for KPL and uh, the training sessions and everything to the head coach himself. So he he takes care of all that. And whenever we we are needed to chip in, we go there and help in whatever way possible. And plus they're playing the matches in Kochi, so they're going to be coming here. So I can just go directly to the team. Um, uh, all of Kohl FC's matches will be held in uh, Kochi. So, looking forward to that as well. But you know, strangely enough, I think Indian football has this tendency of taking to the last day, right? Like we've been saying this forever now. Uh, you know, titles being decided on the last day, and titles which even three teams could possibly win being decided on last day and things like that. Especially the I leagues uh, in the last four, five, six years at least. Uh, maybe not the last time around when Mohan Bagan won. Uh, you know, comfortably declared winner. Even with the uh, even with the season that was hit by COVID, so but otherwise, uh, Indian football has a tendency to somehow make it uh, towards the last day, and I think it's also because we've got uh, you know only a very few teams, a handful of teams playing. So like uh, the self here and there is enough to you know keep the keep the uh, the chasing back right behind the leaders. So uh, very interesting last day uh, for the league. I mean, nobody could have planned that. I mean, having two, we would have planned. And uh, fair play, I mean, we did discuss about Goa so many times in the show. And we, we always said that, uh, you know, Goa have been sort of like a, a top four team. They've sort of had the credentials that, uh, you know, made up that way because they've been consistently performing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, to, to see that Goa has also made it gives that sense of normalcy also in some way that, you know, huh, they've, they've, been, they've been building this and uh, it's good that they didn't have to lose the momentum. But sadly, you to, uh, sadly that meant no Hyderabad FC who, to me, were the team of the season. They played really exciting football and they really trust their Indians as well. So, uh, a little sad that, you know, that uh, Hyderabad FC project couldn't, you know, reach to the final. But they're a very young team. They'll come back next season and... Uh, I don't think there there will be anyone at Hyderabad who is even mildly disappointed with how the season has turned out. Yeah, I know. I mean, when we, we keep talking about the likes of Liston and we talk about full backs and how they performed really well, 
I think for me, Hyderabad FC is perhaps more defined by somebody like a Halicharan Nasri, where I think he's been a player we've talked about for ages now. I think Kerala Blasters fans really didn't like him, despite his, you know, uh, tireless running in the wings. Stephen Constantine always tended, tended to like him. So, um, a lot of people didn't have, uh, or, or rather didn't understand why Nasri kept playing. And I still remember attending a press conference in Bombay, where uh, Constantine was asked this question, why is Nazareth playing? And he's like, I'm the coach for a reason. And I thought that was very arrogant and sort of proved back then for him to answer that way. But you can see the point, right? And and a good team, and I probably have to go back to Liverpool and Klopp there. I mean, if there is some potential, these teams or these coaches evolve. And I think uh, the, the way Nazareth has improved this season and became a very... Uh, very mature midfielder, mature winger, is I think a sort of like an encapsulation of what uh, uh, what Hyderabad FC was this season. They they brought out the best in each individual. They understood what they what they what you know what works best for their players and what is not possible with their players. So they didn't try to overdo things. And the foreigners clicked uh, uh, very well as well. I don't know if it's got anything to do with the potential partnership world one has to do with Dortmund because they were like Dortmund in some way. They, they, they trust their youngsters, they play to to their potential. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Hyderabad, like, like we just discussed, I think Hyderabad had a very good season and uh, and I hope the project continues. And I, I can't see why the project will not continue. They, they, most of the players are going to stay and uh, I think they've got a very interesting manager. They've got a good management as well. So, and it's a very good city. Let's not forget that Hyderabad has a history of football, especially in the 60s and early 70s. Hyderabad Police was a very, very strong outfit, and uh, it's nice that Hyderabad has football again. And hopefully, the crowd is also going back to them. You're reading my mind at the moment because that was going to be my question. You know, the reason they moved uh, from Pune and you know, project and you seem to have answered my question before I asked it in the sense that it's sustainable in the city. Is We've been doing this podcast for almost two years now. It's high time I started trading your mind. <laughs> um, but um, what were you saying? And base can only grow after the season they've had and um, in terms of uh, local leagues and um, do you think this is a, I don't know, a big picture here but um, History has been there in the past, but not in terms of uh, such a big club because I sell clubs, you have to say they're big now. But you think it's sustainable uh, in terms of uh, academies and local talent and what have you? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean ideally, yes, it, it's got everything to do. Uh, I mean, it, it's even backed by a lot of celebrities. Because uh, I was looking at the number of people who were supporting Hyderabad FC prior to the match, and literally all of the Telugu cinema industry had come out in support of Hyderabad. There's there's something happening there. They are very proud of their team, and they're very happy with the way they performed the season. And I know we 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 purists tend to you know take the stance oh we don't want cricketers involved in football, we don't want self football, like Bollywood inter- involved in football and things like that. But you know football is so small that we need all kind of exposure right now and especially for a city like Hyderabad who's not really had good football for a, a long period. I know for the Hyderabad has been around but it's not like a lot of people would attend those matches. So, to, you know, it's very important that the team is backed and it's, I feel it is being backed. I feel like they're putting the right kind of uh, effort in terms of promotion and they're getting it back as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope this project really kicks on. I feel that the everything uh, everything is right. I, if I may add something, um, I hope ISL clubs now start taking owners and also start like, um, you know, organizing tournaments on their own. Maybe have like a, a an invitational tournament, say in, in July or uh, maybe June and you know get a lot of other football clubs to play it doesn't have to be just isl clubs playing each other again you can get like an i league side also to come it's not that difficult you know i don't know why they do it i don't know if the aff has put some restrictions on you know holding such tournaments but we need more football i can't believe that you know 
I have to now wait till October for football to start again. And that's just that's just disheartening because I know both you and I we were really happy with Odisha last season. We thought they were they were on the right path. They were trusting the youngsters and look what a gap is you know done to them. Suddenly the team is nowhere. I know uh, Odisha had a very good perform uh, very good last match of the season, but that was that had no consequence. So probably the team, you know, team also was like, you know, let's just go out there and have fun. And East Bengal, let's be honest, we're not the best side to, you know, really challenge them as well. So, um, yeah, I really hope there is more football so that the Hyderabad uh, project can continue. And I hope the same thing that happened to Odisha doesn't happen to them. That halt is really, you know, something that a lot of football clubs can't afford right now. And say that, you know, six months but at least we can see two clubs um, that we can say you know they seem to be on the right path um, an environment where they can progress and have those tournaments um, what do you think of the idea of bringing back you know there used to be tournaments but there used to be some other tournaments around the country uh, bringing them back um, in the mid-season until we can sort out proper league last longer uh, with the cup involved as well i mean ideally yes bring back all the tournaments if you like. <laughs> i know Duran cup was brought back last season i thought that was a, that was a, a positive step but that's not enough that's not enough for all football clubs in the country kerala used to have big tournaments uh, uh, like i remember chakola saint Nabji, and we, we used to even have foreign teams taking part in these uh, these uh, tournaments so um, and that's that's another step, right? Like Bangladesh, for example, they've got very very good teams. We want a couple of Bangladesh teams to come play a couple of tournaments here. A Nepal team, maybe. Sri Lanka. Or I mean, I'm not saying they're the top stand. If you can if you can get Japan and Thailand and China and all to come, that that's great. But I'm sure a Bangladesh team will not uh, say no. And we need that. That's part of our football. You know? We need to have these tournaments, these shorter tournaments. I'm not saying you know, keep it for a you know, long time, keep it for six months. No, let's have like a three-week tournament, like a month-long mm. tournament and make it a festival. Let's just enjoy football again. I think that's really been missing and I hope people understand that's very important. But I, I Maybe it's coming from a point of view where I just edited a video of a Mohammedan player talking about his days in late 70s and early 80s and the amount of football they played, it's ridiculous. They, they were playing all kinds of tournaments across the country. They were playing, 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 playing. Now footballers, I don't know what they do. It's just like it's March now. A lot of teams have already played. They'll find the match now, and now they just sit there. And you know, their the contract doesn't allow them to go out and have fun and play another football match. Also, it's just I hope I hope AFF and FSDL and everybody concerned with football in this country realize that we need more football matches. Hundred percent, and it's something we've said um, repeatedly. And uh, funnily enough, it's uh, something Coach Laszlo. I think also said uh, that uh, you know, needed along the season. Uh, we, we've been saying that for a while. Obviously, this last season was um, something different. I'm um, hoping never to be repeated. Um, so hopefully, the federation will look at that and maybe um, you know. I think there are plans to introduce a cup. Hopefully, they can bring that sooner. But it'll be good to get some. history that those tournaments have, we can get those during the off-season or other pre-season tournaments, so, you know, the gap is longer and shorter, it would be uh, something good. Uh, I know the powers that be do listen to you, but um, they'll as well. Um, the next team I want to talk about is FC Goa. Um, I know they are pretty much regulars, I think you mentioned several times yesterday, uh, that they always get into the semi-finals, uh, they've got a good... Uh, tradition and history in the, in the ISL. But I think this season was probably, I don't know, you probably correct me, their toughest in terms of the player losses, the new manager. But even despite all that, I thought they did really well to come back in and uh, game. They deserve to be there. I have a different opinion regarding that. I thought like, I, I keep looking at social media and everybody's like, oh, no, he was uh, you know, going through a change. I was turbulent times initially and all that. Uh, That's my view. 
<laughs> no, I know. I mean, I, your view is what pretty much everybody has. I mean, and I agree. I understand like Nobera moving uh, would have been definitely, uh, you know, hard for to swallow, even though it was supposed, supposedly a mutual decision or, or with, but I, I, I even hear that it was uh, the FC Goa's management that decided part ways. But nevertheless, that, that definitely would have taken it over. But they, they used the summer really well, I thought. They were making clever signings and, uh, and this is FC Goa we're talking about. They already have a good supply of youngsters with them. It's, it's not like a team like, say, Hyderabad, who just you know, start from scratch. They've not got like a lot of players in their youth ranks to just, you know, uh, you know, just start playing them. So I don't think FC Goa had it as tough as these people, you know, play. Um, they should have, considering that the team that they have, they should have been in that, uh, in the top four place easy. They shouldn't have made it, you know, towards the last day. And uh, if you see uh, throughout the season, they, they, they've been quite shaky. They, they got a few lucky results, I felt, like a few uh, penalty decisions going their way, a few ghost goals here, there, that. And so, I mean, I'm happy that FC Goa is there because that's our continuity project we're talking about. They've been there in the playoffs for uh, you know a few years now. So you want uh, and you want a team that really trusts their Indians to keep going there and you know keep hitting their uh, target every season. But I disagree with this whole you know there's so much change. You know there's so much change in every Indian football team. There's no team that's consistent because it, again it comes down to the gap. It comes down to the fact that most players are signed for like six month contracts. So they are up and you know they can be sold or like, you know transferred at any any point. So I don't believe the the the, the rhetoric so much, but credits to them to being there. And and I thought they showed the doggedness also towards the end. That that is always required because I think Goa was always the pure team. They were always like if, if the opposition scores three, we can score four, and our idea is to enjoy football. I have seen. Both Sergio Lobera and FC Goa, in their two different ways, understand the need to, you know, defend or play ugly at, at some point of the season. So it's been a good evolution for both both parties, I guess, this season. And one fact that I was surprised with, because obviously uh, I don't keep uh, really up to date in terms of uh, tran uh, transfers and what have you, was Abdul Khan uh, turning up to Goa yesterday from Hyderabad, funnily enough. Uh, but it was good to see him back. And uh, obviously, also look at the fact that somebody like uh, Hyderabad FC, uh, before the tournament, we were all saying Adil is their only star player. Mm. And they decided to let him go. So that's also partly due to the vision that Hyderabad FC has got. Like, we, we, have, we want to trust the youngsters. We've got a certain idea to, you know, how we're going to play football. Sana had a superb season, so that really helped to have like an Indian defender there. So. Yeah, but like, good to see Adil is still around and, you know, playing football. But we need it for the national team. It's not like we are filled with a lot of centre-back options. So, to see Adil fit and ready to play. And he had a decent match yesterday. So, um, yeah, and yeah, all good. Come back at the right time because the Federation of Announced like, Football Friendlies. Um, hopefully, um, I think it's is it Oman and UAE. Or, uh, hopefully, they'll bring their strong teams um, because they are... Uh, ranked higher than us uh, and they didn't bring any um, second strangers. But I think it'll be it's a good time for Angel to come back, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, I think he had a good first game back considering. Uh, but it was a nice surprise for me. I wasn't aware that that was on the cards. Uh, yeah. um, the top two. No, um, may I ask you a question instead though? Like now that Adil is also playing, how do you want your Indian side to be in the centre back position? Do you want like three men in the back? Do you, do you prefer a flat four? Ideally, I'd be a flat four. Uh, which is centre back. Um, I've got that attacking instinct. I think you prefer three. Yeah, I, I, I actually. Obviously, that's why I asked, but uh, because there seems to be a lack of pace. I mean, let's just, I know Pritam and uh, Sandesh have been playing together for 80k, so we don't want to break that duo also. So I think considering how uh, the season has panned out, I wouldn't be surprised if Sri Mash took a 
uh, three men in the back uh, in, the, in the upcoming match. So also, we're playing higher rank sides, so that means more defensive protection as well. Um, you know, we don't have a strong uh, centre back bench. Sandesh. Sandesh and Pritam for me, I think because they've played together, uh, Pritam Kotal for ADK. And uh, I know a lot of uh, players, you know, uh, Gaurav Bora, Sarthak, are all, Sumitrati are all nice, but uh, I know maybe Adil is still there because of the, the physical presence that he brings to the table. Sana had a good season in Hyderabad FC, so that's also an option. So, yeah. Yeah, but Bora has been error prone this season. I've not really seen that kind of development that we expected from him. So, uh, considering the performances this season, I don't think he's there in the top five. He's Unfortunately, yeah. But Manchester United, we've got a whole host of talent when it comes when it comes to right backs. Especially the fullback, uh, fullback combination of uh, uh, Hyderabad FC. I think they've, they've been quite stellar this season, so they should probably give it, get a shot. But how do you, how do you also not play somebody like Prabir Das? I love that player. I think he, he brings in so much versatility. He's a good attacker. He's a good defender as well. So yeah, it's, it's it'll be interesting how the Indian team pans out. Interesting. See whether. Um, a number of players come through in the ISL season about that in a uh, couple of weeks when we do the review because I think uh, quite a few Indian players have come through this season. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully, he doesn't go back to that. But he brings in a few players uh, from the current ISL season, right? So it's what he brings. Uh, but moving to the top two. Uh, well, <laughs> with a win um, over your boys. In the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, Nautis did uh, qualify for the playoffs by. Uh, Ilko was there, of course. So it's not new to them, but nevertheless, uh, completely unexpected. This was a team expected to finish bottom at the start of the season. Nobody thought they were serious at all. Then they sacked their manager in between. We were like, oh no, saving the money. They realized that you know the season is not for them. And suddenly, you look at them, you know, solid finish. And Khalid Jamil, what a guy, what a guy. I know we've talked about him in the in the past episodes, I think he's been like a recurring team for us ever since he sort of started that uh, uh, that stint with uh, with Northeast United. But uh, credits to the team, I we never saw this. So probably the think tanks behind the team understood what was happening. They uh, they decided what what was best for them. Uh, Northeast to give them credit, they've always hired. Uh, they've always uh, signed really good foreigners, not necessarily the flashy. Uh, ones that will, you know, will bring the eyeballs, but they've perf- you know, their form- foreigners have been quite good most of the time. And this season too, they've stood there from center back position to the attackers. They- they've had like good contributions from the foreigners and it- I th- things just worked, right? Say something like Suhair, for example. Anybody who's seen Indian football uh, would know that Suhair likes to move center. He's not an out and out right now. And uh, credits to Khalid Jamil, he understood, huh, I can't afford to keep Sohair so far away from the goal. He's got a natural instinct to score goals. He moved him closer to the to the center and he, he you know, he repaid the faith by two goals, two very important goals considering where Northeast was at that point. So, uh, credits to Khalid Jamil for understanding the players and not, you know, being afraid to beat the system. I think... Uh, I think he's better than a lot of foreign coaches who've come to India. Let's be very honest. I mean, so I think it's high time we shed this idea that you know, foreign coaches give you know, better plans, better strategy, better training. 
Mm. But if not, if not the same level, uh, 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 yeah, I, I would say we've got coaches as good as these foreigners in this country. Yeah, but that leads me to the question, do you think, um, uh, how much credit should Gerard take for this? Oh, I love him. I've, I've not hidden the fact that uh, Gerard Nuss was a uh, very interesting coach. He organized that team and he had uh, something going for them. But Kali Jamil improved that team, right? So I don't know what happened. Did, did uh, Gerard Nuss lose the uh, dressing room? Is that why the dip happened in mid-season? Nobody knows what happened. But like with the same set of players, an Indian manager comes in and he improves, uh, he improves the squad. So I don't know how how to credit it. Was the side always good? Was it our you know uh, preconceived notions that you know Northeast was a bad side and was supposed to doing all these things? Maybe it was always a good side. We never realized it. So very difficult to rate a coach with like four or five matches. So. Yeah, I, I don't want to say anything, but I thought it was a good prospect. I wouldn't be sad if I see him with Kerala Blasters next season. <laughs> I, I'm I mean, not sure. I'd want to wish um, anybody. Anybody. Yeah, that's true. That's like uh, defense against dark arts teacher in Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeps changing. No, I'm only joking. That uh, the fans are in Kerala. I'm only joking. It's kind of um, but like I, I. I would rather have Robertson. Like he's done with what what he's done with uh, Real Kashmir. Yeah, you know he deserves the sun as well. You know he's, he's been in the mountains and away from the sun for quite a long. <laughs> come come to the tropical well, part. Oh no wonder. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, I think um, sun might not be uh, suitable for his. We've got clear beaches and everything here, so he's welcome down south. You know, it's surprising the people that listen to this. Higher up, straight forward, so you never know. And also, uh, if, if people from Real Kashmir are listening, this is in no way to say we, we we are planning to poach your coach. So we just you know this is just uh, this is just banter. And I, I think uh, you mentioned it, but I think he has got a personal attachment to Real because he was right from the start from the get go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, only yeah, I also I, I, I also uh, I also think it makes sense because I think Kerala Blasters are that side. I think a flat four a four four two. With a lot of crosses, resolute defense. That is the only thing that has worked with Kerala Blasters. And if somebody can do it, that's, that's Robertson. I think he's done it really well with Real Kashmir. So, with better players at his disposal, I think he might be actually able to achieve something uh, with Kerala Blasters. You never know what might happen. Um, but hopefully, um, we'll have um, one of the Highlanders joining us for the next show, which will be interesting. Uh, to see and speak to them uh, on their season. Uh, but I also have to give a shout out to uh, a regular viewer who uh, and put comments on the show. So I should really appreciate your support. Um, thank you for your comments and thank you for always supporting the show. He seems to be around always Thank you, thank you. To the top two. How much is that the reason why Mumbai City or where they are well, actual winners and into the Champions League next season? Oh, I, 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 I want to start with the tweet they made yesterday. They said, add it to the cart. And so the ISL trophy or the, the, the league winners trophy added to the cart. And I was like, yes, that's, <laughs> that's what a lot of people are accusing of you have been you know, done, you just probably like spend the money and like added things to your cart. But, uh, you know, banter aside, uh, we always expected this, right? We, 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 we mentioned Mumbai as firm favorites who win the, win the title 
as early as like even before the even before the visit was born. So, um, yeah, to actually have done that and for Lobera to have made a statement saying, "Hey, I'm not a flu. I know what I'm doing." Uh, it was not just a fluent thing. I do the same thing in, in Mumbai as well. He's also uh, developed a lot of good players. Somebody like Vipin Singh who's come through. I know he's been around for a while, but to have you know given him the confidence, then somebody like Farooq to you know trust his youngsters. So he's done a lot of things with the Mumbai side, and uh, they they will have it a little difficult because I think somebody like a uh, Chahu and Mumu are still so vital for that side. Uh, and something like an you know, OPC, uh, not really getting younger. So, this is City Group making a statement. Is the City Group building a dynasty? It's still too early to say. Probably they need somebody more younger, and they'll probably be trying to look for more Indian core. You know, who's that Indian Indian spine that they have? They've got Rollin and Rainier, two very good midfielders. They've got Amrit that I hope he stays. So that that's probably the Indian's best keeper right now. So. It's it's it's. I think they they are they're short of finding two three more regular Indians out there uh, who can you know, carry this forward, and then we can say that you know Mumbai is really there to stay. But they've got the financial power to do it, so I don't expect them to do anything less. Um, with that backing and with the um, ambitions everywhere, do you think this will be the first time? Do you think that will change now with the banking? It, it should change. Why have? Yeah, I mean, it will be sad if they don't do it. I don't think it is a lack of seriousness from any any team that has been the reason why we, we, we failed in AFC tournaments. I think it's just that we don't have the financial power to you know attract you know attract big players. So we go there with what we have, and that's just not good enough for something like the Messi Champions League. But right now, if the City group really wants, and if they're really interested, that's They've got a fair shot with uh, Mumbai. They can, you know, get a couple of really good players. They've got a good coach in Lobera, and at least make a statement. I'm not saying go and win something, but at least make a good statement. Uh, the, a lot was expected with FC Goa, to be very honest. Um, uh, this season, uh, everybody thought they're going to be build on last year's uh, success and uh, you know, do a lot of things. And I thought they made the team that way. I thought. That's what I keep going back to. I thought the summer was nice. I thought they were signing exciting players and they were going to really be attractive. So when I keep reading about oh how difficult the season has been and all that, especially as a Kerala Blasters supporter, I'm like, oh, how? Where is it difficult? You had like a good team. <laughs> you know, you signed a good coach. I don't know how it's difficult for you guys. You have like good youth rank as well. But um, yeah, uh, City Group. Yeah, definitely. I hope. I really hope they they achieve this about this. And um, obviously, we can't end the chat without DDK um, on Bhutan. And uh, we talk about the uh, backing uh, that we have got uh, from Mumbai City and the ones that they're likely to bring in even more into the future. It is DDK. Uh, much into the game yesterday because it was a comfortable win uh, for Mumbai. It was it was uncharacteristic Abbas performance. They usually very dogged and they, yeah. they they thrive on these kind of pressure matches. So it was a little uncharacteristic. Uh, also mistakes from uh, otherwise very reliable defense. I thought TV was at fault for the first goal, and that's very uncharacteristic. But they're still there. They're still probably going to win the win, win the cup uh, because I think they are very good at knockout matches and. Probably they took their eyes off it. I don't know. I have no explanation for it because that would have been a good shot for Habas to really say, "Hey, I'm more than just a uh, just a knockout specialist. I am I am building a dynasty here." So yeah, a little disappointed with how ATK Mohan Bagan performed last night, but um, I don't think we need to read too much into it. I think it's just a one-off match. Can I play um, a bit of a. Had one eye on who they could get in the playoffs, um, and this is just a wild, out of the box, weird theory that yeah, 
final. <laughs> yeah, but I think the uh, if you look at the finances attached to playing in the Champions League, if a team yeah. decides to you know uh, look at uh, which which opponent will be easier for the cup, that's very unlikely. And that's still the semi-final, right? You can you can beat North East and you still have to come and play a Mumbai City again or uh, FC Goa, whoever. Wins. So I don't think they would have done that. If they were thinking at the back of the mind, they then they should be really worried about the semi-final as well, because then that means they've lost focus. Probably don't underestimate Northeast. They've oh, done crazy stuff. They've defeated Mumbai, right? Yeah, they de- de- defeated Mumbai also. So yeah, I mean, they just. Yeah, Uh, but uh, in terms of the playoffs now, I'm really looking forward to these uh, playoff games. Uh, especially, you know, the Champions League is really How do you see these panning out? I mean, we'll do the next show probably after the first round. We'll do the first round with a couple of guests. Uh, but how do you see these games going? The goal versus Mumbai, I mean, Go up, like you keep saying, I've got the talent there to challenge them. And North East, you can't take them lightly. So they're going to be, I don't think they're going to be uh, one side. Yeah, I think uh, the Mumbai FC Goa match, I kind of feel like Mumbai is going to dominate because they're very strong. Uh, I do. I didn't read enough to see if there are going to be any ma- uh, suspensions for the state. Then that, that might make a few uh, differences here and there. But on paper, I feel Mumbai is far superior, and I, I'm expecting them to dominate the FC Goa. Not, I'm not saying go score five, six goals, but at least uh, do enough to win both legs. The other match is going to be very interesting though, because Khalid Jamil doesn't like losing clearly. Habas is a. a I was going to say, I don't think Habas likes losing. At all, either. So uh, that is going to be, I think, one one of those typical semi final encounters is going to be like fought really hard in the midfield. I don't see a, a lot of chances being created at both ends. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a red card involved. I, I, I'm expecting a more um, fiercely encounter in that leg. And that's, that's a match I don't want to miss. Uh, Mumbai and FC Goa, I'll just be okay if I happen to miss it somehow. But the other match, that that's the kind of uh, semi-finals I really enjoy watching, the tight ones. And I hope it really lives up to the billing and I hope uh, say Northeast can cause an upset in the first match, like a 2 1 or something, so that there's owners on ATK to go attack now. So that really changes things. If if ATK is going to score first, then they're going to sit back and defend, and they're really good at that. So let's really see what's going on. And are you going to. Um, you think Mumbai will be one of the finalists? I'm going to say Mumbai and Northeast because, you know, I'm not being credible. Yeah, I think, I think that would be a fantastic game to what has been a very unique season, I think is the way yeah. I can put it. Um, but yeah, like yourself, I'm really looking I still remember discussing the playoff last season with you. It's, it seems like this is yesterday. I still remember walking, I was at my Chennai play, house, and and we called it right last time. Ron. We called which side is going to win and how, how it's going to happen. So. Well, I'm glad you said we because I think I was you. <laughs> but I appreciate that. No, I no, yeah. I, 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 I cannot distinctly remember that we agreed on how the matches are going to pan out as well. So take some credit as well. <laughs> Absolutely. But I know when I'm speaking to an expert and it's always me, so I tend to agree with that person. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the playoffs and um uh, and the games and I think um um, I wouldn't be too now, now, to see. Suddenly it's just like a flow of emotions. I miss being in Chennai. and Not necessarily being in Chennai, but I've got to watch that match. The first leg of uh, Chennai versus FC Goa. And we were expecting FC Goa to be really good. And then Chennai went and like, did the whole thing, which is scoring a lot of things. Yeah, 
Uh, have I told you this? I've never seen Chennai lose at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Chennai. Whenever I've gone there, they've at least uh, drawn the match. And I went in the season, they were having such a terrible season. I started going for matches. And the first match, I think, was the first match that I went to was a Hyderabad match, in which they finally managed to score a goal after such a, like, so many matches without goals. Um, and there was a 2 1, and there were two goals in the extra time. Or, like, it was three goals in the extra time. It was crazy, crazy. Crazy, like, Orish's uh, last game. Uh, to forget uh, 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 So I did predict it. Now, uh, now whenever, whenever a Manchester United, uh, whenever Man United plays a, a top side, it's always zero zero. So I was playing badminton yesterday. I was like, you know, it's going to end zero zero. Why do we watch? I watched the entire match, thinking that I would be proven wrong in my theory. But again, it's another zero zero. <laughs> but I, I didn't watch the Leicester match. Oh, I, you did. Yeah. I saw the first tweet from some Arsenal fans saying, oh no, you have to go again, you know, another mistake, Leicester scoring. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then okay. then I didn't watch the match and realized, oh. Apart from the loss, it's the fact that um, we possibly lost the past. Uh, repeating, uh, just when we were, had a chance of getting into the ball, we were very much repeating. The whole spate of injuries, which um, just broke our season at the end of the um, Restart last year, and the same thing seems to be happening again. Uh, that's a huge loss. Top of uh, Madison, Fofana, Ayers, Perez. Madison is just not getting a break. No, he'll come back and he gets injured again. Just, yeah. uh, I think this is all catching up now because they didn't have to break last summer. Yeah, the break was in lockdown, which is not a break. Uh, Around to the new season, I think it's catching up with a lot of players. Uh, but uh, Pop uh, mentioned the injuries he's got, and I'm be very happy again because he needs to look uh, But we'll see what happens. We've got another game to bounce back. We'll be a very changed team against Burnley on Wednesday. Uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. With the, um, the Hands out, and hopefully we'll get a couple of fans on next week as well to help us uh, uh, you kicking my week off in such a positive and uh, manner put me in a good mood, ready for Monday. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and also for not sharing the view. Um, I'm glad about the view you had. Um, but hopefully you have another fantastic week and um, look forward to speaking to you.